do we mean by quadratic inequality? Any equal any equality which is reducible to one of these four forms. Okay, so any inequality which is reducible to one of these four forms is a quadratic inequality. So some quadratic expression either positive or negative or greater than or equal to zero which is non-negative or less than or equal to zero which is non-positive, right? So typically, uh, you know, as in the case of a linear inequality, so when you talk about 2x minus 1 greater than 0. So 2x minus 1 equal to 0 is of course not a quadratic inequality, it's a linear inequality. But even in this, the solution set, if 2x minus 1 equal to 0, if you had only considered that equation, the solution set was a single value, but now the solution set will be a set of values. So for example, in this case, you will see that the solution set of this is x greater than 1 by 2. Right, so any, you have a set of infinite values, and you say that any value of x which is greater than 1 by 2 will be a part of the solution set of this inequality. So typically once you, when you start talking about inequalities, the solution sets of inequalities, you start getting sets of values rather than, you start getting uh, subsets of the set of real numbers, right? So, uh, you know, something like maybe x greater than half or some x lies between 1 and 2 and things like that. So you get, start getting interval of values rather than uh, uh, finite set of points. Right? which you typically happens with polynomial equations. So quadratic inequalities, although obviously are not as straightforward as linear inequalities, but this still can very easily be solved. So let's just look at that. Uh, but before we kind of get into quadratic inequalities, we just want to look at this uh, bracket notation with something, it's something which you might already be familiar with. So again, as we discussed, when you start solving inequalities, you will get intervals, you will get subsets of the set of real numbers, you will get, you will start getting interval of values. <coughs> so uh, we just want to look at this bracket notation that is quite frequently used in expressing these uh, subsets. Okay. So let's quickly just look at that. So, so for example, suppose I have the set A and B. So throughout this discussion, we will assume that A is a value which is less than B. So I can talk about an interval x lying between a and b. So this is the set of values. This is obviously the set of values of x which are greater than a, but simultaneously which happen to be less than b. So this set can be represented in this bracket notation. X belongs to round brackets a comma b, right? So a and b, a comma b over here denotes the denote the endpoints of the interval. The round usage of the round bracket is basically indicating that the endpoints, these endpoints are not included in the set. So when I want to kind of designate the interval that x strictly lies between a and b, I'll simply say that x belongs to so round brackets a comma b. Similarly, you might want to designate this particular set that x is greater than or equal to a and at the same time it is less than or equal to b. So the inclusion, the endpoints have also been included in the solution set. So in this case, whenever you want to include an endpoint, you instead of a round bracket, we use a square bracket at the corresponding endpoint. So over here we will say that x belongs to the square bracket a comma b. Right. Similarly, you might have such an interval x less than a. So x less than a will basically again what x less than a means it denotes the set of all values x which are less than a, which basically means for example when I say that x is less than two, you can you know from two you can go right up to minus infinity. Right. So x can take any value between minus infinity to two. So in this case, I'll say that x belongs to the interval minus infinity to a. Similarly, if it had been x less than or equal to a, you would have said that x belongs to the interval minus infinity to a, and there would have been a square bracket at a, right? At infinity or minus infinity, there's always a round bracket. So for x greater than or equal to b, I'll say that x can take any value from b to infinity. Right? And finally, something of this form, x less than a or x less than greater than b. So for example, if I say something like x is less than 1 or x can be greater than 2. So what you're doing over here, you're taking two disjoint sets and you're taking the union, right? So set of values of x which are less than 1 or also set of values of x which are greater than 2, right? So we'll use the union operator. So x less than a would have been the set minus infinity to a and the set b to infinity becomes b. So that is a bracket notation and we can, I mean, both forms are, you can either represent your solution set in this particular form or you can also represent it using your bracket notation.
any quadratic any quadratic inequality can always be solved empty quadratic inequality can always be successfully solved by plotting the graph of a corresponding quadratic expression so let's just quickly look at that so we can come up with some basic uh, steps so we can reduce the inequality to the form ax square plus bx plus c you know either positive or negative So as a first step, you can always, given any quadratic inequality, you can always reduce the inequality to a form where you know all the terms are on one side and the coefficient of x square is positive. It is not. This is not essential. You can also deal with the situation where the coefficient is negative, but for you know for a certain uniformity, it's always better to reduce the inequality to a form where the coefficient of the squared term is positive. Right. That in some cases might require you to multiply both sides by a negative number. In which case you should always remember that this is again something very fundamental, and you already know this. Given any inequality, whenever you multiply both sides or divide both sides by a negative number, you always have to remember to change the sign of, reverse the sign of the inequality. For example, if x is a value which is less than one, and I decide to multiply by, uh, you know, for example, or it's like a so if I say that two is less than three, and I multiply both sides by minus two, so I get minus four and minus six, and obviously the sign of inequality has changed, right? So if I have something like x less than two, then minus two x will be greater than minus. You just have to kind of take care of things like this, right? Given any inequality, if you multiply divide by a negative number, the sign of inequality will reverse. Now, once you do this in the second step, what we can simply do is plot. Second step, all we have to do is we just have to quickly plot a rough. We just want to get an approximate graph, or we quickly just want to plot the graph of y equal to x square plus bx plus c relative to the x-axis. Relative to the x-axis over here means that we are not really interested in where the y-axis is. So, for example, we are not interested in the coordinates of the vertex, uh, like we were plotting in the previous problem, in which we actually wanted to plot the graph relative to the x as well as y-axis. So when you're plotting it relative to the x-axis, the only two things that you'll be interested in is first of all whether the parabola is opening up or down. Now over here, since we've already made the coefficient of x square as positive, it'll obviously then open up. And the second thing now is that whether what is happening relative to the x-axis. So is the parabola you look at the discriminant whether it's positive, zero, or negative? If it's positive, it's again intersecting the x-axis at two distinct points. In which case, we also want to find the points of intersection by putting y equal to zero. Second, the discriminant is zero, which means that the graph is touching the x-axis, and the point at which it touches the x-axis will simply be the vertex minus b by two by comma zero, uh, because d is zero. And in the third case, if the discriminant is negative, in which case it will either completely it will be completely above the x-axis or uh, below the x-axis if a happens to be negative. Right, we'll be keeping a as well. And once you plot the graph, it will be, will be very easy to judge the sign of the expression uh, by looking at the graph. So the idea that we we'll use is that uh, you know, once you plot the graph, if you want x squared plus b x plus c to be positive, you effectively want y to be positive. So you want the graph to be above the x-axis. And whenever you want x squared plus b x plus c to be negative, the graph y should be negative, so the graph should be below the x-axis. For a square plus b square plus c greater than or equal to zero, y can also be equal to zero. So the graph we will also consider values where the graph intersects the x-axis. Right. Right. So they're fairly simple steps, and now let's just quickly apply them to problems. So suppose these are quadratic inequalities. We want to solve them. So we we'll start from the first one. <coughs> so again, over here, the coefficient of x square anyway is already positive. Uh, so we just want to quickly look at the discriminant, which is again one. And again, when you put y equal to zero, I'll get x as two comma three. So again, relative to the x-axis, what is happening is that it's a parabola opening up. It's at in intersecting the x-axis at two and three. It's actually 2 comma 0 and 3 comma 0, but let's just write 2 and 3 for the time being. So now again, we want, what do we want? The, we want those values of x for which this expression, which is y, is positive. 
So you want again this is the x axis and you want y to be positive. And for y to be positive, we know that the graph needs to be above the x axis. So clearly from the graph, where is the graph above the x axis? If I take values of x which are less than two, or I could take values of x which are greater than three. So that is your final answer, which again in bracket notation becomes x belongs to minus infinity to union. So we were very easily able to get the solution set for the given inequality. Similarly, if the inequality had been x squared minus 5x plus 6 greater than or equal to 0, then you would have also included these points 2 and 3. So it would have been x less than or equal to 2 or x greater than or equal to 3. And in the bracket notation, you would have had square brackets are 2 and 3. Right. Similarly, if it had been x squared minus 5x plus 6 negative, then you would have said that the graph needs to be below the x-axis, which is clearly happening between 2 and 3. So in that case, the answer would have been that I should lie between 2 and 3. Second one again, if you look at the discriminant, it is 1 plus one plus uh, 12, 12 into 24, so that's 25, which is positive. And if I put y as 0, I'll get x as minus 1 plus minus 5 by 4. So that is uh, 1 comma minus 2. Okay. So in this case again, the parabola is opening up. And uh, the points of intersection are given by minus 3 by 2 comma 0 and 1. And over here we want y should be less than or equal to 0. So the graph should be below the x-axis and it can be equal to 0 also, y can be equal to 0 also. So x will have to take values between minus 3 by 2 and 1, including both the endpoints, because again, it's a less than equal to 0 case, which again in bracket notation would mean square brackets minus 3 by 2 to 1. Okay, I'm just changing the third problem. Uh, let's change this to plus 1, okay? So I've changed the third problem. Uh, so in the third problem now, again, you can either look at this as a quadratic expression and which will be a parabola opening down, or you can simply just multiply minus, through minus 1 both sides. So if I multiply by minus 1 both sides, the sign of inequality will have to be changed. Right, so this was the original inequality which is equivalent to this particular form, right? And now we'll just solve the second form. Both the forms are equivalent, so the solution sets will remain the same. So again, over here, the discriminant is 1 plus 4, so that's 5, 5. And if I put so y equal to 0, will again mean that x can be 1 plus minus root 5, 5, 2. So if you plot y versus x again, And again, now you want that y should be greater than or equal to 0. So that will happen either to the left of 1 minus root 5 by 2 or to the right of 1 plus root 5 by 2. And these two points will also be included. So the answer should be x belongs to minus infinity comma 1 minus root 5 by 2 union 1 plus root 5 by 2. Now the fourth question is slightly tricky, so we'll have to be careful about it. Again, we call this quadratic expression as we denoted by the variable y. So we want the values of x of which y is positive. Parable opening up, the discriminant is 1 minus 8, so that's minus 7. Now the discriminant over here is going to be negative, and it's a parable opening up. And we've already seen that discriminant negative always means that the what the discriminant negative essentially means is that the graph will not cut the intersect the x-axis at all. Which combined with the fact that the parabola is opening up wouldn't have to mean that the graph or the curve is always going to be above the x-axis, right? But now if it's always going to be above the x-axis, what should the solution set be over here? You wanted those values of x for which y is positive, but since the graph is always above the x-axis, y will always be positive. 
So irrespective of the value of x that you choose, you can give x any real value and the corresponding value of y will always turn out to be positive, which means that the solution set of this inequality should be the set of all real numbers. So again, the solution set for the fourth question is the set of all real numbers simply because for every value of x, the inequality is going to be satisfied. Again, uh, let's make the coefficient of x squared as plus 1. So multiply 1 by minus 1 on both sides. Right, so the discriminant over here now is 36 minus uh, 160, which is clearly a negative value. Right? So again, if I were to plot the graph of y versus x, it's a parabola opening up and uh, it's not intersecting the x-axis at all. And we want that y should be less than or equal to 0. Right? So what should the solution set be? You want those values of x for which y is either 0 or negative. But that will never happen since the graph again in this case is always above the x-axis. So there is no value of x for which y is less than equal to 0. So the solution set I'll say is the empty set. There is basically no value of x for which the solution set, the inequality will be satisfied. So as you've seen, uh, given a quadratic inequality, you will always be able to solve it by going to a corresponding graph. and. Uh, However, in a lot of cases, uh, when you solve quadratic inequalities, in, uh, if it is possible to factorize the quadratic expression, if you are quickly being able to identify the factors into which the quadratic expression can be factorized, there's an even faster method which is something known as the method of intervals or the wavy curve method, uh, which can be applied to solve the inequality. So we'll just have a look at that. The good thing about the wavy curve method is that, of course, you can apply it to quadratic inequalities, but it can get extended. So even if you have a product of three linear factors or four linear factors, or any finite number of factors, or maybe you can also complicate it by you know having linear factors in the numerator and linear factors in the denominator. Uh, you can complicate it further by having linear factors in the numerator and denominator with powers on them. Right. So in all these cases, the method of uh, the wavy curve method kind of gets extended, and it helps you solve the solve such inequalities. Uh, but for the timing again, th that will be dealt in detail in the chapter of in equations and equations. But for the timing again, we'll just be looking at applications of the wavy curve method to solve quadratic inequalities. And again, as I said, in the chapter of in equations and equations, we'll be looking at the application of the wavy curve method for even uh, you know, for, a, for more complicated forms also. So as I said that you know, over here in all these cases, <laughs> you only had linear factors in the numerator and the power was 1. So the complexity that can be added is that you could add linear factors in the denominator also. And with each linear factor, there could be a power which is either even or odd and not necessarily 1. So in that case, again, a couple of more rules get added. But every such inequality, you'll always be able to solve it very easily using those equations. One last important point in the context of quadratic inequalities that we want to look at is this idea of, for example, we had seen when we were looking at the examples of uh, in the application of quadratic inequalities, we had seen some examples in which a quadratic expression was turning out to be always positive. And similarly, there can be situations in which a quadratic expression will always be negative. There can be a situation in which a quadratic expression is always greater than or equal to zero or always less than or equal to zero. So these, these four cases are important and we also want to develop corresponding conditions for them, right? So these conditions are important and they are essentially four cases. So in the first case, again, we want that ax square plus bx plus c should be positive for all x belong to one. Again, the stress over here is for all values of x. A given quadratic expression is through a lot of examples, for example, x square minus 5x plus 6 we had seen could, was positive for some values of x, less than 2 or greater than 3, and was negative for other values of x between 2 and 3. And similarly, it was greater than equal to 0 or less than equal to 0 for certain values of x. But something like x squared plus x plus 1 will turn out to always be positive. So in general, what are the conditions for that? Right. So again, ax squared plus bx plus c should be greater than 0 for all possible real values of x. So for this, we can easily say that uh, if this has to happen, the graph of this always has to be above the x-axis which means that it should be a parabola opening up 
and it should not intersect the x axis right for the first case so for the first case the conditions are that a should be positive and b should be negative similarly for the second case let's say if you want it to always be negative it will have to be a parabola opening down and it should not intersect the x axis these are the two most important cases and then we can also talk about a quadratic expression always being non negative right so suppose you want that ax square plus bx plus c is always greater than or equal to 0 for all possible real numbers right? so in this case we'll say that again it should be a parabola opening up which may either always be above the x axis or at the most might touch it so the discriminant could either be less than 0 or equal to 0 so less than And similarly, so in all the cases, D again, capital D refers to the discriminant, which is B squared minus 4AC. So in the first problem, actually, both the parts are uh, nature of the roots based problems, which will actually require quadratic inequalities. So if you look at the first question, A part, you have a quadratic equation, and you want that it should have non-real roots, for which obviously we say that the discriminant must be negative. So Equation is x square minus 2ax plus 8a minus 15. Non-real roots discriminant should be negative, so 4a square minus be negative. A square minus 8a plus 15 should be negative. Now this again is easily factorized. So we can just simply use the method of the wavy curve method. So for negative, a should lie between three and five. Right. So for the a part, the answer would be that the uh, value, the value of the parameter a must lie between three and five. B part again, we want that this equation should have real roots. So for real root, again the discriminant is greater than or equal to zero. So sixty-four minus. That's 16 minus a square. Again, let's multiply by minus one, so the coefficient becomes plus one for a square. This again is getting factorized easily, so a minus eight to a plus two. Minus two eight zero at eight zero at minus two and negative. A should lie between two. That should be our final answer. A is greater than equal to minus two and less than equal to eight. is a pass IT problem and it again is not difficult as such so they basically what's happening over here is that you have two inequalities so you have a system of inequalities and you want to find common solutions so typically in such situation what we do is we'll find the solution sets of each of the involved inequalities and then they take their intersection we'll take an intersection of the solution first so let's just solve the two inequalities one by one so the first one again is Again, by wave curve method, coefficient x is positive, so x is less than equal to one or greater than or equal to two. Right, so that's the solution set of the first inequality. Now, the thing about the second inequality is that again, you're not you're not getting many convenient factors for it. Right, so again, the wave curve method. Uh, Might not be very convenient over here because being able to split it up into its factors is not very straightforward over here. So we can simply go to the graphical method the way of solving it. So the discriminant over here is clearly positive, so two points of intersection. Uh, if I put y equal to zero, plus minus discriminant should be fourteen. Right, four uh, plus sixteen, so that's twenty. So that's two root five by two. 
So that's 1 plus or minus root 5, right? So the graph of the expression should look like something like this. Right? You want y to be, you want this expression to be less than equal to 0. So that happens between 1 minus root 5 and 1 plus root 5. So I get x should lie between 1 minus root 5 and Right, so we have two solution sets, and we now just need to, as a final step, we just need to take the intersection. Right? So, taking intersection of solution sets is something which you might have seen earlier in earlier classes. So we'll just quickly uh, revisit that idea. So the idea is to simply plot both the solution sets on the number line. So the first solution set is here is one and two, and x is less than or equal to one, or greater than or equal to 2, right? The solid dot over here indicates the fact that this, these two endpoints 1 and 2 themselves are included. So less than or equal to 1 or, or greater than or equal to 2. If it had been only x strictly less than 1, I would have used the hollow dot over here, right? And in the second inequality, we're saying that x should lie between 1 minus root 5 and 1 plus root 5. Now 1 minus root 5 will obviously be somewhere over here. And 1 plus root 5 would be somewhere over here. So x lies between these two values. So that's the second solution set. So again, first solution set and the second solution set. An intersection of both the solution set would refer to those values of x which belong to both the sets, for which you effectively just need to take a overlap. Where are these two uh, solution sets overlapping? That's clearly happening once between 1 minus root 5 to 1. Union, and the second time it's happening is between 2 to 1 plus root 5. So this then becomes a answer. X belongs to the set 1 minus root 5 to 1, union 2 to 1 plus root 5. This idea of taking intersections across multiple solution sets is important. This is again a pass ID problem and again uh, the question is that we have a quadratic expression, there is a parameter A involved and so the condition given is that we have a quadratic expression which is positive for all possible real values of x. So we will use the concept that we have discussed. So again for a quadratic expression to always be positive, what are the required two conditions that are uh, required? The coefficient of x square must be positive. That already is the case since it is 1. And the second condition is that the discriminant must be negative. So that's the only thing that we need to use over here. It's 3a minus 10. Right? This again has factors a plus 5 into a minus 2, which then by the wavy curve method gives the answer as minus 5. This again is a pass ID problem. Uh, it's a slightly tricky problem. It's not very difficult, but it's a little tricky, so we'll have to be careful in you know the way we approach the problem. So we have a quadratic equation. There are two parameters involved A and B over here. And the condition is that this equation has real and an equal roots for all values of B, for all real values of B. And for that to be true, we want to find the corresponding set of values of A, right? So again, let's go in a step by step manner, uh, in a sequential manner. So the first condition of course is that the equation that we uh, has been given has real and unequal roots. So the first step we will say that the discriminant of the first original equation must be strictly positive. And also, this is true, the discriminant itself is positive, so it has real and unequal roots for all possible values of b. So this itself must be true for all 
possible values of b, right? So what do we get from here? Discriminant is again a minus b square minus. Okay, let's so simplifying. This can be interpreted as a quadratic inequality in the variable b. So re let's write it in that form. So b plus twice of b to 2 minus a. And that's what you get. So when we impose a condition that the discriminant of the original quadratic equation is positive, we get this inequality. I have rewritten it as a quadratic inequality in the variable b, depending on a as a parameter. And now again, this itself is true for all possible values of b. So we again go to the idea of a quadratic expression always having the same sign. So this is a quadratic inequality in the variable b, and the condition that we want uh, is that this inequality should, uh, this quadratic expression should always be positive. So again, for that to happen, the coefficient of b square must be positive, which is true. And the discriminant of this expression itself, right? So let's call that as d1. That itself must be negative. So d1 is referring to the quadratic, the b square minus the, you know, the quadrat, the discriminant value of this expression. So 4 into That, that, that is it. I mean, we just need to simplify this now. Right, so we get our answer as a greater than 1. So the answer is that a can take any value, a belongs to the interval 1 to infinity. So there are basically two discriminants involved over here. So you have to be, it's a example of what is known as a double discriminant problem. So the, there was the original quadratic equation whose discriminant was capital D. Its roots were given to be real and distinct. So we say that D must be positive. D positive has actually turned out to be a quadratic inequality in the variable B. Uh, at least we rewrote it in that way. And this again was given to be true for all possible values of B. And therefore the coefficient of B square should have been positive, which was true. And the discriminant value of this expression itself must be negative, which we then imposed. 